Hey everybody, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Glenn Tompkins and today this story is all about semiconductor chips. So we all know that semiconductor chips are very widely needed. There's a high demand for them, but is it a viable space for you to make money in the stock market? So the supply issues, there's a problem with supply issues, vehicles are being affected by it. A lot of things that utilize chips are being affected by the supply issues. Why? Because the chips are primarily made outside of the United States and not here. What are we doing to try to bring the chip production back to the United States so that we can overcome to a certain degree the chip shortage globally? If we can bring some of that manufacturing here, it will help us to reduce the prices of the chips and put more chips into circulation in the United States without having to go outside of the United States. So I did a little digging to find out what's being done to bring manufacturing back to us and if it's going to be a viable space for you to make money in as far as in the stock market. If you want to find out what I found out, you sit right there. Hey everybody, Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at our VectorVest YouTube channel. Love bringing these videos to your attention and I think that this is an important one. Um, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted to when new videos like this come out. So. Uh, and most of all, if you like the content, hit the like button and share this video so the people outside in your social circles, if you see that they can find this usable for them to make money, then make sure you share it with them as well. Let's get right into my stories. I got a lot of stories here. One, well, I wanted to find out where the chips are being used and why they're so important and why there's such a buzz about the supply issues of chips. Eight reasons why semiconductors are important to modern living. I'm going to go through this real quick. The first thing is in computing. A lot of people, the chip shortage started pretty much when it came out to uh, the, the games the consoles for games. That's where it really all started. And people were saying, man, that's going to, it's going to affect it. It did. All right. So in computing, not only in controllers or in the gaming systems, but in your computers themselves, they need chips. Let's go over to telecommunications, um, the control machine functions, the difference in the type of chips used and what they're used for at the same time, their design differs from device to device. So from a telecommunications perspective in your cell phones. Everybody's got a cell phone and chips are being used in there. For household appliances, your smart refrigerators, your dishwasher, your washer and dryer, all of those things utilize chips. As we get more technologically advanced, chips are playing a bigger, bigger role in being able to do a lot more with the devices that you have. Banking, that makes sense. You go to the ATM machine. These machines utilize chips as well in the security sector, in the healthcare sector, transportation, cars, planes, what is it? Cars, trains, and automobiles everywhere. And it's a whole different story. Anyway, um, and, and again, from the transportation perspective, cars, whether they be EVs or regular cars, are vastly being affected by the chip shortage. So when we talk about a chip shortage, why is there a chip shortage? I wanted to know how, what was the percentage of chips being developed or being manufactured in the United States? So here's a story. Uh, back in 1990, 36 7% of the uh, global chips were made in the United States. Now it's only 12% of global chip production. That's a big drop. That's a big drop. Well, why did we drop? Well, we dropped because U.S. heavily outsources chips since they're cheaper and easier to go overseas. There's a lot of reasons why we uh, outsource overseas because it is cheaper, but there's a lot of different reasons why things are cheaper and it's got to do with human relations and all that kind of stuff. That's another story for another time. The country's reliance on foreign, foreign manufacturers is even more glaring among, amid the global chip shortage. And that's interesting. Dropping from 37% down to 12% and the chip shortage, it, 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 it's mind boggling. 
but it's about the almighty dollar and it's cheaper to go overseas. The solution, as President Biden has said, is to invest in domestic chip production. Well, how about this? There's a bill out there right now. Chip makers are refusing to build new semiconductor plants in the U.S. unless Congress unlocks to $52 billion in funding. And, you know, when I looked at this, it's already passed. The CHIPS Act is already passed um, back in 2021 to bolster domestic chip industry. But they're still not giving out the money yet for this, which is kind of interesting. And the story says that it needs to be done before the August uh, the, the August recess, or they think that the whole idea is going to go away. August is just a month away. Can they get and start putting out the money? If it's already passed, the money is there. All they need to do is start giving it out. Well, in that case, let's see who is doing something about it. Governor Abbott announces, and this is the governor of Texas, Global Tech Semiconductor Facility Expansion, where in Sherman, Texas, the governor, Greg Abbott, today, and this was back in uh, a couple of weeks ago, that Global Tech will establish an additional manufacturing uh, facility in Sherman, uh, Taiwan-based global wafers, blah, blah, blah. This project will create 1,500 new jobs and uh, generate a lot of money for this state. Uh, A Texas Enterprise Fund grant of $15 million has been extended to Global Tech in in addition, and Global Tech has been offered $10,000 veteran created job bonus. That's huge. I'm a veteran. I think that that's huge to get more veterans uh, back in the, in the workforce, but going after some domestic uh, manufacturing of chips, and that's a step in the right direction. So uh, semiconductor cycles show signs of peaking. Demand for semiconductors and equipment used in their production has been sky high, but at the same time, there's a cyclical downturn is becoming more and more apparent across the industry. I I, I I differ with this story because the demand is high. The demand is high. Uh, my next story talks about a TSMC, a big player in this space, uh, warns of additional chip material price hikes, which could squeeze the semiconductor giants. All right. This was done on July 5th. Two days later, the same company says TSMC expects a 30 percent sales rise despite global economic ructions. Interesting. So even though the demand is high, the supply is short, people still need these chips and people are willing to pay an inflated price for these. And these companies, if that's the case, will rise in price from an investment position. Right. So this is all about is this going to be good investments for you guys out there, even though the space looks like it's been contracted? because of the supply issue. Now, another company, AMD, um, says that it uh, an AMD is a victim of a bad blow at a very bad time. That's another big uh, company in this space. The manufacturer is going through some uh, difficult times right now, marked by questions of, about the demand for its graphics cards. I still think that AMD, a big a big player in this space, will still have the chips uh, to do put out their cards. They're just going to be at a lower number of cards that they could put out be put out. But people are going to be willing to pay the inflated prices. The the bad thing about the inflated prices is that who does it affect? The consumer. But as a company, these investments in these companies, the prices are still going to go higher because people are going to need these chips or need these devices. Uh, Chips are in for trouble. Uh, This was a couple of weeks ago. Four stocks get downgraded. And the last one is from a perspective of an ETF, Transcend Capital, uh, has a $335,000 position in Vanek Semiconductor ETF, ticker symbol SMH. All right, so there are people outside or looking at the potential of these stocks and putting money into an ETF and an ETF or an exchange traded fund is an easier way for you to capture the whole space without having to invest in one individual stock in this space. Now, talking about the stocks in this space, let's move over to the software. And here are, I've got a watch list in the VectorVest software of 60 
uh, semiconductors. I'm looking at the top 10 sorted by our proprietary indicator relative value. These are the stocks that have the biggest propensity to outperform a AAA corporate bond over the next one to three years, cast on a scale between zero and two, with Hymix at the top of the list, should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 79% over the next one to three years. The upside potential on these stocks is amazing. So from an investment standpoint, long-term, these stocks are looking good. But short-term, look at these stocks. Because the space has been decimated, the majority of these stocks, nine out of the 10 stocks are sell recommendations. So why are you telling us, Glenn, about these stocks? Because they have great big potential. The demand is still high and people are willing to pay the inflated prices for the devices that have the semiconductors. So from that perspective, these stocks still have the potential to go up. You just need to time them to get in at the right time and get out at the at the at the right time as well. So I wanted to look at the watch list of all 60 stocks and what they look like as a group over the last six months. So if you look at the bottom of this list, there's a watch list average of all 60 stocks, even though I'm only showing 10, I'm going to right click view the uh, graph. All right. This is the graph over the last six months. This is what the industry looks like. Because of the supply issues, this is what's going on. And it's affecting, again, stocks or companies all around that need these devices. But there's a couple of bullish signs here. One, we have a value. We put an intrinsic value on every stock in our database. And we want you to be in stocks or in a group of stocks that are undervalued. Why? Because tends when a stock or a group of stocks is above value, what tends to happen is that the stock's price will fall to meet the value. And it did it here. It then got exorbitant overvalue again, all right here. And what did it do? It fell down to meet value again. So the opposite should show when a stock is undervalued or a group of stocks, which is this green line, is undervalued. Look what happens. The price rises to meet value, goes back, gets un overvalued again. And currently we are back in a situation where the group of stocks is undervalued and the upside potential outweighs the downside risk right now. Short term, long term, we're going to have to bring manufacturing back to the United States and it's going to take some time to get there. But short term, right now, the list of stocks is undervalued. But look at the earnings per share going up while all of this is going on, these companies are making money. And that bodes well for the stocks overall. The relative timing on the stocks, there's also a bullish divergence in that it's starting to move higher. It just went back down uh, below that, that trend line there. Um, it is moving, let me move over. It is moving higher. Both of these give me bullish divergences on the space. And again, it's going to be short term. So some of these stocks may have some good run ups side short term, but long term until the supply issues are corrected or taken care of, we are in a downtrend. All right. So that's looking at all 60 stocks. I made a list of stocks that caught my attention that I really want you to look at. And here's the top 12 or 13 chip stocks that I have for you to take a look at. There's 12 of them. Let's bring them all up for you. These are the ones that I like the most. And for the majority of them, remember when I showed you in the graph that when a stock tends to be undervalued, it tends to rise up to meet value. The majority Majority of these stocks, of the 12 stocks that you're looking at right here, are undervalued. Short term, though, these stocks are under some selling pressure. They are sell recommendations, right? AVGO undervalued. Uh, Micron. So I have price and value right next to them, uh, each other. Micron, undervalued. AMD, undervalued. Taiwan Semi, undervalued. A lower dollar stock, HiMax, undervalued. Um, NVIDIA, a good stock in this space currently is one of the stocks that is overvalued. Does that mean you don't buy it? No, it just means that currently it is over its value right now. Skyworks, undervalued. Cirrus, undervalued. Another low dollar stock, UMC, currently trading at 643. It's got a value of $10 
undervalued. Here's another stock, ASML, currently overvalued. So there's two stocks out of the 12 that are overvalued, but the majority of these stocks currently are undervalued. And look at these relative values. These stocks should outperform AAA corporate bonds by a lot over the next one to three years long-term. So yes, I'm looking at this from two perspectives. Long-term, the industry is being affected by the chip supply. Well, I like that there's a bill in Congress right now that is passed, but they got to get off their butts and take that money and put it out there so that companies can come back and bring the manufacturing of the chips back to the United States. We have less dependence on having to outsource them, and that's going to affect us at uh, to, a, to a big part. All right. So another thing, earnings, all of these companies have positive earnings. They grow their earnings in excess of 20% or more each year. The stocks that do pay a dividend, the dividend safety on those stocks is nicely above 50 or above. So the stocks that are in this space that pay dividends are safe dividends. Another reason why these stocks could go up in price. And here is my uh, semiconductor uh, ETF SMH at the bottom of the list, but it's an ETF. Right now, majority of these stocks are being affected by not being in uptrends. That's why they're sales. Relative timing on these is not the right time, but folks, given what I just gave you in this space, these stocks have great upside potential. If I look at these stocks, what do you need to do? Let's go view the stock graph. You need to time them. Let's go put these on a three month graph, looking at the three and the eight. Let's go change the layouts. Uh, where's my three, eight layout? Uh, there it is, three, eight layout. But, um, you know, at some point in time, you got to say these companies, you know, how low can they go? Can they go down forever? They won't, they won't go down forever and they all could be setting up. They all could be setting up. Here's a bump on electronic manufacturing. Oh, I took the stocks off. That sucks. Uh, I did that for, uh, for something else, but a couple of these stocks are starting to bump up. Now you got to just take a look at them. Uh, in time when to get into them. But I still think that the space overall is a good space to be in because of what's going on behind the scenes, because of the demand on these stocks. All I'm saying is that I think that this space right now is a powder keg ready to explode at the right time. And if that bill in Congress, they start to put those stocks, uh, put that money out there, it could be huge for this space. So I've given you some stocks to keep your eyes on. I've given you a couple of low dollar stocks like HIMAX, H-I-M-X, and uh, UMC is two lower dollar stocks in this space and one ETF, SMH, to take a look at as well. So folks, Again, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to hit that share button, share that with people in your social circles, and most of all, hit that like button. This video is over. Until the next time, see ya.